Hello, it's Pastor Mark. It's Saturday evening, and we finished the work for our online worship service that will begin in a few minutes. But this evening, we've learned about a devastating tornado that has hit Jonesboro, Arkansas, and there may be other communities that are affected by this as well. Please keep them in your prayers. We will be lifting them up. Our emergency response team workers with the United Methodist Committee on Relief is in contact with local officials to find out what, when, and how we can be of assistance. We will communicate anything that we learn through our Facebook page, any urgent needs through our Facebook and email, and I ask that you keep them in your prayers this morning as we continue in worship. Please know that at the end of our worship service, we do have on our YouTube channel an explanation of how to set up the giving app on your phone or device. That does have a fund that's called Emergency Fund, which we will use to channel gifts for the United Methodist Committee Relief and other things that we will do for our local efforts for Jonesboro, as well as for any needs that we may have in our own communities. You're free to give through the app or online through our website. And of course, we welcome you to mail checks in uh, or get in touch with us to arrange ways to get donations to help with any emergency relief fund that we may have. In times like this, when we're facing all the challenges of COVID-19 and the pandemic that has hit our communities, to know that our brothers and sisters are facing such a tragedy this evening breaks our hearts. We continue in worship this morning knowing that we are not going to be set aside by this. We are going to continue to be the hands and feet of Christ in this and every situation that challenges us so that others may know the grace that God offers and we may love God, love others, and serve the world. That's the message in worship this morning, and it still rings true. So keep our brothers and sisters in your prayers. Let us know if you have needs, and if you would like to give, please donate it for our emergency relief fund. Thank you, and God bless. Let's continue in worship this morning. Good morning, and welcome to First United Methodist Church in our online worship service. My name is Mark McDonald. I'm pastor, and I'm delighted to be with you in this time of worship. This morning, I want to remind you of the priorities we have set during this time of isolation. First, we are caring for our church. Second, we are caring for our community. By caring for our church, I don't mean the building. Although we are keeping the building, Joe, our custodian, is working his way through the building and sanitizing every room. Even the, the pool table balls in the youth room have been sanitized. This week, he's been sanitizing every single chair in the fellowship hall. All this is so that when we get back to being able to come into our building and meet together face to face, we will be confident we are secure and safe. What I mean by caring for the church, however, is the real church, not the building, but the body of Christ. Unity. Our blessing box is staying so very active. We have people from all through the community that are bringing food to share with others. We have people that are coming not only to take food for themselves, but to share food with others. Our church members, our staff are coming and watching this box as much as we can. Usually every hour or two, it's being checked and refilled. So I hope that you will come by and fill it up. If it is full, there is a large box that is next to the entrance of our children's area where you can put extra items in so that we can move that into the blessing box. Lastly, we have a group that I'm excited to share with you that's making masks, face masks for our healthcare professionals because there is a shortage. Two of our members are administrating this, but what's exciting about it is that we have 200 people from our community that are involved in this. And so I hope that you will wait for the opportunity to see how this is growing and I will share a video with you so you can see just what's going on. Hi, my name is Althea Fox and about a week ago, a friend of mine tagged me on Facebook in a message where they were talking about making masks for the hospital because the hospital was running short of, of personal protective equipment. And so I started conversing with this girl named Wendy Lewis, who I have no idea who she is other than she works at the hospital. And between the two of us, we came up with the idea of creating a Facebook page which I had never done before. But I said, I could probably figure it out. So I created a Facebook page, and before I could even get my welcome message up, I had five people join the page. The interest was incredible. 
Um, by the end of the day, we had 100 members. We had people donating fabric, donating money, wanting to sew, wanting to cut, uh, you name it. Everybody wanted to do something to help out. So we've been uh, organizing this group and getting it together along with Toy at the hospital. And uh, we have just done an amazing job. I don't know how many masks we've done yet, but I've made close to 100 already. And I know a lot of people have made just as many. I think it's a wonderful idea. The uh, response from the community is just fantastic. Um, we really have a good community here. If you think that you uh, are interested in helping, not necessarily our group, but just in helping, there are lots of things you can do. Uh, food banks need help. People need to be called just to remind them that somebody cares about them. Um, just anything. Please contact uh, the church for things that can be done, and uh, we wish you all well. We are delighted to be with you in this time of worship this morning, and I invite you to prepare a place in your mind, in your heart, and of course in your home as we continue in worship this morning and come to glorify God and support one another with the love of Jesus Christ that knows no bounds and never ends. and girls and children of all ages this morning. 
I want to tell you a story about two of my friends. One of my friends is a bunny called Lucy, and the other is a bunny called Leo. Now they were born at the same time in the spring, one year, and they were so happy in the forest, playing together and enjoying one another, until Leo got a little bit older and he began to look around and he began to think that there was something wrong with him. He began to think that he wasn't normal because his ears tripped him when he ran or hopped. They got in his water and his food when he tried to eat. But Lucy's ears stayed right up out of the way and didn't trip her or get her get into her food. So Leo was sad. He was different. He didn't feel normal. He decided to take advantage of an idea that he had. So he got some, a, he found a, a tree that he could climb and he climbed up into the tree and he tied his ears to a branch and then he swung from the branch and he swang and he swang and he swang. And pretty soon Mr. Owl said, what you doing, son? And Leo said, I'm trying to make my ears stand up because I'm not normal. They flop down and all of the other bunny's ears stand straight up. So the owl thought for just a moment and he said, you know, Leo, whatever you are is normal. It's normal for you. So Leo untied his ears, climbed back down the tree, and he said to himself as he hopped off into the woods, I'm normal, I'm okay, it's okay to be different. Well, when the other bunnies heard that the owl had told Leo he was normal, they began to feel like they weren't very normal. So they devised a plan and they found some rocks and they tied the rocks to the end of their ears and they pulled their ears down as hard as they could, and they walked around for days with these rocks dangling from the ends of their ears. Pretty soon, Mr. Owl said, "'What you doing?' And Lucy answered, "'Well, we heard you tell Leo that he was normal, and that means we're not normal because our ears don't flop over like Leo's do.'" And Mr. Owl said, "'Oh, silly Lucy, you are normal. If your ears stand up, that's normal for you. It's okay to be different as long as what's normal for you is what you're comfortable with. Well, that word normal is kind of a hard word to think about right now because there's not very much in our lives that's normal anymore. We don't go to school. We don't go to church. We try not to go out. We stay as far away from other people as we can. We can't see our grandparents or our friends. We can't have play dates. But that's normal for how to react when there is a pandemic. And a pandemic just means a worldwide sickness that makes a lot of people ill. And our job is to make it better. Now, it's okay and it's normal for you to be scared because this is a different time. We've never lived in a time like this before. It's okay for you to be sad because a lot of things have been canceled. That's normal for you to be sad. It's normal for you to be depressed because you're not around your friends and you're not doing the things that seem normal to you. Everything is different, but what it is right now is normal. And while I say everything is different, the one thing that never, ever, ever changes is God's love. And so during this new normal time, when we have to stay home and wash our hands and use hand sanitizer and not be around people to cover our coughs with an elbow, when we do that for other people, we are showing God's love. And that's what never changes, is God's love. 
So in this time when you're scared, pray to God. When you're depressed, pray to God. When you're sad, tell God about it. Because God is the one who never ever changes. And it's God's strength that will carry us through this normal time to a new normal beyond this time. But God never changes. Will you pray with me this morning? Dear God, we thank you so much that you love each and every one of us, that you want for us health and well-being. We know that these are difficult times. We know these are times that frighten us, but that's normal to be frightened in times like this. It's okay. Just help us to remember that you are the one who never changes and that you will take all of our fears and all of our tears and all of our anxiety and help us to be better. Amen. you will be with me when I'm standing in the fire I will not be overcome through the valley of the shadow I will not fear dark of night will not overtake me. I am pressing into you. Lord, you find my every battle. Hi, I'm Carl Hudson, Associate Pastor of First United Methodist Church, Batesville. 
I'm here to bring you the prayer of the people and the Lord's Prayer. During this time, I will lift up groups of people and I will say, I will leave you time to lift up those that you know and those who you have concerns for. And then I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and we will all say, hear our prayers. So please join me in prayer. Almighty and loving God, we come to you today in this time of constant change and anxiety, knowing that you are with us, that you know the desires of our hearts, and that you will answer those desires. We ask that you just be with us during these times and that you will help us to make it through. And if we get anxious, remind us that you are with us because you always are. Lord, we just pray for those who are sick with this virus that they may be healed. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Families that have lost loved ones due to the virus and just lost loved ones in this time. In your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the doctors, the nurses, and the medical workers who are pushing through working long shifts, and exposing themselves to potential harm. In your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the police, the firefighters, and the emergency medical technicians who are out there on the road responding to the needs of our community because we need them and they're always placing themselves in harm's way. In your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray, dear Father, for the small business owners and the unemployed who are not knowing what is going to happen. And this is a very stressful time for them. We lift them up in prayer. In your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those in the national, state, and uh, local public offices, as well as those who are public officials around the world. For they're all experiencing something that they have never been through before and they are trying their best. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. And we lift these prayers up because you taught us to come to you. You taught us to come to you and your son Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May you have a blessed day and a blessed week. And always remember, God is with you. God, I give you what I can today. These scattered ashes that I hid away, I lay it all 
at your feet from the corners of my deepest shame the empty places where I've worn your name show me the love I say I believe and help me to lay Scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, beginning with the 28th verse. Hear now these words. One of the legal experts heard their dispute and saw how well Jesus answered them. He came over and asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, the most important one is, Israel, listen. Our God is the one Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your being and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The legal experts said to him, well said, teacher. You have truthfully said that God is one and there is no one besides him. And to love God with all of heart, a full understanding, and with all of one's strength, and to know one's neighbor, to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more important than all kinds of entirely burned offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered with wisdom, he said to him, You aren't far from God's kingdom. After that, 
No one dared to ask him more questions. May God add blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of this portion of God's holy word. Let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The irony of what we're going through this Lent has not passed me by. Lent, of course, is a time of preparation for Easter. We begin it inside the traditions of our church by starting on Ash Wednesday with the imposition of the ashes on our foreheads. And then we move through a period of 40 days. It excludes Sundays. It's actually 46 days, but Sundays are considered little Easter's and breaks from our changes. But it is a period of 40 days that we choose to make changes in our life so that on Easter we can find a new life in God through Jesus Christ's resurrection. And by that, what we usually do is we give something up in our lives. So a lot of times people will give up chocolate or coffee or something else that, that maybe they do too much of. And sometimes it's a much greater sacrifice than that. But a lot of times it's something that we want too much. And then we also encourage people not just to take out something that's bad, but to bring something in that's good. So a lot of people in our congregation, for instance, began this Lent by giving up something that was distracting them in their time and keeping them so busy they didn't have time left for God, and then adding in Bible study or a devotional time or just a prayer time. And so it's getting rid of the old and bringing in the new so that on Easter Sunday, we've made a change in our lives and we have new life in Christ. But again, most often we sacrifice things that we want, not what we need. So the irony of facing all the challenges that we have faced the last two weeks because of the COVID-19 conditions is that we are being forced not only to give up things that we want, that we didn't want to give up, but we're even giving up some of our needs. That's heavy. But if you think about it, it's very, very Linton. Jesus gave his entire life for us. He gave up the things that we thought were essential so often. And in that time of 40 days of prayer and fasting, he ate nothing so he could become totally dependent on his relationship with God and do what God wanted him to do. And of course, we celebrate Lent by having Sundays as little Easter's, or as one of my friends calls it, cheat days. And so we can't do that anymore. We don't have cheat days when we're called to socially distance from one another and isolate ourselves. We also don't have an end date. Now we're using this, this word indefinite to talk about how long we're going to keep the building closed at the church, or how long school will be only meeting in AMI days. Or how many, how many days will, will businesses be closed? Will, will we face all this? It's indefinite. And so we use very different words, and this is much more intense than Lent has ever been for me, and I suspect for you. But what Lent is meant to do is help us realize what things are most important in our lives. When Jesus came out of the wilderness, ready to call his first disciples, ready to preach and teach and heal, he knew what was most important. I think we're learning that, aren't we? We're finding out that we had lots of busyness in our lives, and now we're asking ourselves, what do we want to put back when all this is over? What changes do we want to make when it's time to be resurrected? That's a powerful question, and it's a hopeful question if you think about it. So all week as I've been thinking about the changes that we're making, I kept coming back to this passage from Jesus that I read where somebody comes up to quiz him and says, what's the most important thing in the world? What's the most important commandment that God's ever given? And Jesus doesn't miss a beat. It is, hear this, Israel, hear children of God. The Lord your God is one. There is no other before God. You shall love God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now, we understand that in many ways as worship and devotion. We develop our relationship with God in many ways by going to church. The church being, of course, the building. And I think we've fallen into this, this understanding that somehow when we come into this place, that we are getting closer to God. 
Now, we know in our minds that that is not true, that God is everywhere and God is always walking with us. But I think in our religion, in our habits, we have come to the point where we say love God means that we have personal devotional time or we gather together to worship in this sanctuary. And I don't think that's completely right. It's partially true. We, we have set this aside for corporate worship. And there are amazing miracles that happen in here week after week. But love God with your heart, soul, mind, and strength is not just something we do inside of a building. And then Jesus doesn't stop there. He immediately adds a second commandment. He doesn't stop by answering just the question that was asked. He adds to it and says, and the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. And I think, again, we have fallen into the practice in current religion, in our churches, in our traditions of understanding that loving God takes place in the church, but loving others is what we do when we go out of here. Now, we know that's not completely true. We know that loving each other is part of what we do with the people around us, like our phone care team that we're starting right now is another way we love one another. But we also know that loving your neighbor is anybody with whom you come in contact. Not just the people who sit next to you in the pew or live next door to you. It's everybody. And you know that's hard. Because sometimes those neighbors aren't nice to us. They do things that upset us. Sometimes we think to ourselves also, well, if we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourself, I don't really care much for myself, so I guess I don't have to care for them. You hear how we, we rationalize our failures in this and we get stuck in that. If we truly love God, though, we understand that God loves us unconditionally. God loves us and, and redeems us. God treasures us. And when we do that, then we want to love others in the same way. But we have fallen into this practice of the church of loving God being in here, loving others being out there, and we are being tested on that today. Right now, remember Romans 8, 28 doesn't say that God makes everything happen. It says that whatever happens, God can make something good come out of it. I don't believe that God willed COVID-19 on anybody. I believe that makes God sad, but I also believe that even in the midst of tragedy, God can, can bring redemption and hope. And maybe right now it'll come out like never before and we'll start to realize that we don't stop with loving God inside here and loving others out there. So in our church, we have a saying, uh, a, a vision statement, a slogan that is love God, love others, serve the world. In our youth group, it's love God, love others, prove it. They mean the same thing. And I began to think about this. When I went to seminary at SMU, one of the, the sayings that they had that was, it was on, on banners that we had, it was on coffee cups, it was, unite the two so long disjoined, knowledge and vital piety. So in other words, bring those two components back together. Knowledge, the things that we know, the study that we have, and vital piety, that is, things that are necessary, good works that are necessary to make the world a better place, to bring about justice and righteousness. Unite those two so that we, the things that we know are put into practice and they come together. I believe that that vision slogan that we have, love God, love others, serve the world, is exactly that. And serve the world, or as the youth put it, prove it, is how we unite this concept that loving God is not just in the building and loving others is not just outside these walls. And right now, by locking down the building, we're being challenged to serve others as if nothing else is more important. And in doing so, we are going to draw closer to God and closer to one another in powerful, powerful ways. I've asked Sarah Reed to share a bit with us. Now, Sarah is attending school in New Orleans, working on her master's program, as you'll share in a minute. But Sarah has a unique perspective because she's in one of the hot spots. And I asked her to share some of her experiences, how she's doing, and share a little bit about what she's learned and experienced in this. So watch this video. It's about five minutes long. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a quick update from New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, some of you might not know this, but I've been away um, getting my master's degree in voice performance, which is why I haven't been in church these past few months. Um, I'm still down here and still, you know, under quarantine and doing fine. I um, wanted to do this video to talk about ways that this community has been reacting um, to the coronavirus uh, cases. We have about 847, I think, last time I checked. So um, 
it's it's getting kind of crazy down here. Um, there, Pastor Mark's sermon really resonated with me this past Sunday, and I wanted to share um, the ways in which I've been finding a way out and people have been finding ways out in this community. Um, so some of you might know this, but I work at a Baptist church in um, New Orleans. I sing with the choir there. It's called St. Charles Avenue Baptist. Um, and there's a member of the choir in there. Her name is Linda, and she gave me a call a couple of days ago. Linda is about 70 years old in her mid 60s or 70s. Um, she gave me a call because she knew I'd been out of supplies, and she asked me if there was anything she could look for at the store for me. She said, because I'm elderly, I get to go into the stores first, and I know that you don't get to go in the stores first, and by the time we all get there, all the good stuff is gone. So um, I want to look for things for you. Please let me know of your needs. And I was so touched by that because, you know, I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm 24, and if I get sick, I'm going to get through it, no matter what happens. But for her, it might not be the case. And, you know, there's just a lot about this virus we don't know. And she was willing to go out there and to be the hands and feet of Christ to me and show me that love and tell me that she knew that I had a need and that she wanted to find a way to help me. And um, I hung up with her and I was so touched by that gesture that um, I actually have two friends that we're pretty sure are um, that they have COVID-19 and um, they've both been in quarantine and I have not seen them in weeks and I have not exhibited any symptoms and I am fine again. Uh, do not worry about that. And they are doing fine at home in self-quarantine as well. That is a huge answered prayer and a big blessing. Um, a lot of the pipes are old, so that means that they frequently have boil water advisories. So a lot of New Orleans residents rely on drinking water from the store to be able to get drinking water. Um, my friend Julia lives in New Orleans proper, and uh, she does not drink the tap water. And she is sick, and she ran out of clean water. And this was after hanging up with Linda, so I was still very, you know, inspired and touched by what she was doing for me. So I um, asked Julia if she had a water pitcher, and she said no. And I remembered that I had a spare one in my closet. So I packed it up and I said, is there anything else you need? And she said, I couldn't find garbage bags um, in my online delivery. I tried to buy some, but I guess there weren't any to be had. And I said, great, I have some to spare. I will bring them to you. So I loaded up my car, inspired by Linda. And I said, you know, if she can be that for me, then I can be this for my sick friend. And um, I drove into New Orleans and dropped the things off at her porch and she now has clean water. So um, Pastor Mark's sermon really resonated with me and uh, there are people out there helping. There are people out there, you know, getting up and choosing to not succumb to the fear and to not just hide in under their blankets and their pillows and, until all this passes. We have to, um, we have to think about, you know, ways that God has loved us and, and the way how Jesus would want us to treat our neighbors in this, this very critical, unheard of time. And we have to go out and do those things. And so that's one of my experiences that I've had down here. And I continue to have wonderful experiences. There's a church member also at the same church that I work at. Her name's Becky. She gave me a call the other day. Um, she is a doctor on top of an epidemiologist. So me and Becky have a lot of phone calls <laughs> recently. And I put a lot of stock in what she says. She talked to me for about an hour and a half because she told me she knew I lived alone and she knew I was without my family and she just wanted to give me some comfort. And she told me a lot of facts and figures and ways that I could help myself and things that I could pass on to family and stuff like that. And that was really encouraging too. So, you know, even without being able to do for others, just calling people and just sharing comfort and sharing knowledge and sharing uh, prayers and things like that are, are helpful during this time too. And that's another experience that I've had down here. So um, that's that's kind of what's going on down here. Uh, give me a call anytime. I am here and uh, that's what I'm doing. So I'm safe and uh, God bless everybody. Did you hear that? Is it not an amazing testimony of how God is very much at work?
And Sarah, thank you for sharing from your heart. You heard how she was almost paralyzed by the overwhelming nature of everything that we're all experiencing. She didn't want to go outside of her apartment for fear. I've had days like that. And, and I think that many of us find ourselves breaking down from time to time. It's a natural process of this. As, as Sandy did so wonderfully in the children's sermon, it's the new normal. It is normal to be sad and upset. But what was so inspiring to me about Sarah's story that I asked her to share was that while she was in that sense of not knowing what to do, how to move forward, it was somebody else reaching out to her that freed her up to reach out to someone else. That's amazing that in reaching out to another person, we may free them to experience how God's love flows through them, not just to them. Sarah mentioned that when somebody reached out to her, then she immediately turned and said, who can I do something for? And you notice she left the house after that very carefully. She's taken great precautions and I'm so grateful she's okay and not had any symptoms so far. But it's a wonderful example of how you bring together these two commandments. Love God and love others are united when we serve. When we serve the love, when we serve the world, when we love each other with the love that Christ has showed us, God loves us unconditionally. And when we start to realize that, we should immediately tell somebody else about that, but not necessarily preach at them. Just let, let the, the, the actions be our sermons. And in the midst of that, we will see how God will take one of the greatest tragedies that most of us will ever see in our lifetimes and bring the church alive like never before. I'm going to continue to share videos with you. Joel, Joel Williams has done a man on the street interview with several people where he's asked some key questions and we'll show that each week. So you'll hear what people are experiencing, what's good and what's bad. And I'm going to ask you that if you have videos that you would like to share about what you're going through, a little three, four or five minute video just to let the church know what you've experienced, something that God has moved in you. I welcome that. And we'll work in as many as we can in the hour that we have each week. And maybe we'll have room for more. And, and, and even in our daily devotionals that we'll share on Facebook, all of these will remind us how God is very much alive and very much in love with you and, and our call to love God and love others is united when we serve the world. But notice, you can be isolated in your home and still serve the world in powerful ways. You don't have to come to church to love God. You don't have to go outside of the walls to love others. You do both of them all the time. God walks with you every step of every day when you do both love God and love others by serving the world. Did you hear in the passage that we had that the man who came to Jesus immediately said, that's more important than all kinds of entirely burnt offerings and sacrifices? That's showing our love for God, not just that, that it comes into us, but that it goes right back out is what he's talking about. And Jesus said to that man, you aren't far from God's kingdom. You just about got it. That is what we're called to do. Love God and love others. And the way we're called to do it is by serving the world, by following in the footsteps of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has not left us, never will, who gives us a love that never dies and never ends. Praise be to God for that. As you face the coming weeks, even as things may seem to get harder, know that God is still more powerful than anything we experience. And we are going to work hard to care for our church and care for our community like we've never done before so that we can become the church that God wants to be in this kingdom today. Well, I get to do a premiere again today, and that is our new man on the street. Joel Williams is the man on the street, and he's asking a series of questions to people outside of these walls. And so today we share the first of those videos. Next week we have, we have more church members in China that are going to share with you, and we'll continue to, to share the perspective that people have as they move through this and find our hope in Christ. We watch this today as we get ready to close our service and continue in our service. Amen and amen.
What's good about these days? These days? Mm -hmm. Well, right now you're seeing a lot more unity and, and people coming together, a lot more family time, uh, people putting up uh, things that really matter in perspective, you know, so yeah. you're starting to see a, a shift in, in the way lives live daily. Okay, and what worries you? Nothing really. I mean, my faith is strong. Uh, finances sometimes, just the way things are going, but other than that, nothing. What gives you hope? Um, Jesus' promises. Um, I know I can look to those, and uh, I know his word is true, and it's been so true in my life that, that I just rely on it. What can Christians do in times like this? Just continue to do what they're doing to show that um, they stand firm and stand on, on God's promises. Uh, you see a lot of worry and things going on in the world, but with the Christians, you don't see that worry or that dread or that gloom because you know they are standing on His promises. That they're being responsible and uh, being smart about the things they need to do during this time, but they're also leaning on God's promises and uh, each other in this time. And uh, you don't see the worry and the uneasiness in them during this time. And what can we help you with? I'd just like to see a lot more um, of the Christian community um, putting more things out there. Uh, now's the time to really uh, to let people know um, that there is someone whose name's above all of this and that uh, he will get you through it. And that there's people who, who know and that can... Uh, talk to you and, and speak to you about these things. I want you to look at this room as we close our service today because a few weeks ago had somebody told us that we had to close the doors of the church we would have thought that it meant the end of our history. And yet today we stand and see these days as an opportunity to grow in our service to others as we seek to love God, love others, and serve the world to fulfill the scripture that Jesus said is the greatest commandment of all, to love God and to love our neighbor. So as we end this service, know that our service never ends. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
It seems today like there's a smartphone app for everything. Paying for coffee, checking in for a flight, or arranging for a ride. That's because apps make life easier. We know you want the same ease and convenience when giving to the church. Give Plus Church puts the power of secure smartphone giving directly into your hands. In a few quick steps, you can make gifts and payments through your smartphone. First, go to App Store or Google Play to download the free Give Plus Church app. Just search for Give Plus Church to find it quickly. The first time you open the app, you'll be prompted to enter the name of our church. Or after you allow the app to access your location, use the Find Churches Near Me feature to search for it. After you select our church, it becomes your home church. The next time you open the app, it will already be displayed. You can give as a guess with Give Plus Church or create an account. This will allow you to set up recurring gifts, save your payment information for future donations, and access your giving history. When you create an account, you'll enter your email address and choose a password. You'll also be able to log in with your smartphone's Touch ID or fingerprint, or with a PIN. Follow the prompts in Give Plus Church to set up donations to one or more funds. Then, choose your method of payment. Donations can be made with major debit and credit cards or with a bank account. Enter your information manually or scan your card with your smartphone's camera. You can also check a box that adds to your donation to help offset processing fees. If you're logged into your Give Plus account, you'll also get an emailed receipt. We hope you'll enjoy this new way to contribute to our ministry and thank you for your support. Call or visit the church office to ask about Give Plus Church and the other electronic giving options we offer.